Interesting. I saw you can check it in on Zoom, so she might come in today. Okay, I'm ready. And take it away. Okay. Good morning. This is, um, I'm calling to order the Thursday, June 15, 2023, regular meeting of the Columbia Open Space Committee. And I will entertain a motion to um, approve the minutes of May 18th. Any discussion? Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Discussion. Corrections, predictions, directions. I just want to say that. They're very nice names. <laughs> I hate paid by the words. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, very, very, very sure. I, I think we need a secretary. <laughs> you won't join, but I think we can appoint a secretary. That's how it all starts. <laughs> <laughs> go to a meeting. Oh, we have a secretary. Could you just today do it? And the next thing you know, you're chairing. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how that happened to me. <laughs> They see, they see the weakness. Oh, there's a weak one. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Um, all in favor? Uh, all in favor? Okay. Two abstentions. Okay. Um, where is St. Paul State? Do you, anybody know where he is? Is he zooming? I know he has. I, don't, I haven't heard about whether he was a plan to tell me today. Okay. He has a minute to go. Mm -hmm. Well, he does. Okay. Audience of citizens for anything not on the agenda. I think I got a couple of quick things. Okay. So, Friends of Model Pond, we met, uh, had our annual meeting, and we appointed our officers. We're moving forward with trying to have some logo type merchandise. Uh, potentially prior to the event in August for TPL. We are talking to a little bit about maybe having some sort of organization of the year or a person of the year award like for TPL or for honor or for somebody else that we would do as a part of the event at uh, the winery, if that makes sense. Uh, the next thing was the uh, Conservation Commission, we were looking at doing the right to farm signs like they have in Colchester. And from Friends of Mono Pond, I'm looking at the website similar to what the Colchester Land Trust has. So I've been back and forth with them um, for the past couple of months. And they actually invited me to attend their annual meeting uh, a couple of nights ago. And uh, it actually was their 20th anniversary of being in existence. And because I, I was like the only one there from Columbia, they, they had their meeting as they went through the meeting and they were talking about their successes. And they said, hey, and Columbia's going to try to adopt our standard sign for right to farm. And, and so then they asked me to talk to different people about what's happening in Columbia. And so I had the opportunity to talk, talk to them about the you know, monopond master plan, the airline trail master plan, uh, what we're doing for all these different um, you know, town owned open space and things. So. They were like, yeah, if there's any way we can collaborate with friends of Mono Pond or whatever, have like an event where we do a walk or a bike ride, end up at Hearthstone or whatever that they're very interested in. Um, what group was that? Yeah, what, it was called the Colchester Land Trust, oh. CLT, Colchester Land Trust. And they started 20 years ago and they now manage about a thousand acres. And they have a lot of really smart people on. The way they get money through grants and different things, and setting up an endowment and having the endowment managed by another nonprofit. And it's like they really have their act together. If you, if you, where I'd like to see Friends of Model Pond go. So, do they have an open space committee? Well, the town has, been, so this is a separate entity. Yeah, so. And most of those people are, are also on different committees in town. And so the person that started the organization sees the liaison from that organization to the town. So they, they have a really good, kind of like a Joshua's Trust. If Joshua's Trust had a representative, it was a liaison 
to the town representing all of Joshua's trust, not just the parcels in town, which kind of am is that you? It's me. Okay. Right, but I mean, you, you're not officially, I don't know if you're officially, but they officially appointed somebody as a liaison, and the town accepted that as important, you know, part of their. No, the town has a Joshua's trust has. If they have any questions about Columbia, come to me and I bring it to you. But I honestly had never heard of them until I started researching the signs, you know, the right to farm, because I had seen these all over Colchester and so I was like, where did these come from? And then I, I discovered the organization. But they they definitely embraced me with helping me. <laughs> so that's great. So can we wipe out Colchester and just put in? That's what we did. Basically, Honestly. that really I, that's, that's what we did for this prototype. Yeah, the graphic artist that they had, uh -huh. they created it. I just reached out to them. I said, these people said that you did this. Could you do this? Well, oh yeah. And like and the, and the company that they work with in Norwich to make the signs, they got right there. like, so they're respected uh -huh. within their community. So the other thing that I had, which I'm not sure where to bring it up, but I might as well do it here. Was as we're moving forward with the uh, with TPL doing the management plan for funds of model plan, and now that that's in multiple towns, when should we bring in the town planners for Columbia, Hebron, and Lebanon to talk? Because it really is, it's the access points off of all the roads and Mill Street, Pine Street, 207, to maybe have all three of those town planners in the room so that they understand that this is coming and that they uh, agree with what. TPL or do him. Um, it, my opinion on the timing of that is that um, TPL when and um, and whoever they're going to hire. I be international. Oh, uh, international Viking, mountain biking mountain biking association. Biking. And the state when they all get organized that um, they, I hope, are going to contact us and interview us as stakeholders. And at that time, they keep her in Lebanon. In yeah, I guess, I guess I'm, I, I'm not optimistic that things happen in the right order. So it's like, I, 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 if it was me, I would either from open space or CCAG, whatever, say, you know, as you're moving forward at the early part, early phase, could you get all the town players in the room? And if they say no, that's okay. But so yes, that would be a great thing. And then because if we don't have if the towns and the town planners disagree with what they come up with for a management plan, then it'll you know not be successful. I think TPO is pretty good about that kind of stuff. I think to be out of numbers with about that kind of stuff. So make sure no. that matters get put in the right time and incorporate it. Well, I have, I have no, no trust in anything. Okay. That'll be in the right order. Keep your eye on it. Tom, do you care? Is that it? Please don't. Okay. Um, good morning, Honor. Um, Honor, we, we have a question that you might best answer. Can you pass that one again? Uh, so one of the concerns I have for the management plan for Mono Pond is the timing of when the town planners for each of the towns, Hebron, Columbia, Lebanon, would be involved so that they would endorse the access points to Mono Pond State Park. It was, was that a question? Sorry, I'm are you asking when the municipalities will have a say in the access points? Uh, and in the plan. Right, I, I just want to make sure that before the plan is created, you know, in the early part of the development of the plan, that whatever's going to happen, that all the towns have buy into it. So there's no point in creating a plan that says, yes, we're going to come in from Mill Street and Hebron and then say, well, we don't want that, we're going to block that. No. So, so the process for the master trails planning is that IMBA, if if that's who we contract, 
TPL and, you know, partners decide to contract, that there is a full-blown engagement process with the state, with municipalities, with stakeholders, with the community, the town. Everyone has a seat at the table when it comes to these sort of participatory process, um, planning processes. So, so yes, absolutely, there will be a moment where the town can have there will be public meetings, there will be Mark and the select board's input on access points. All of that will be considered. Ultimately, it's state property, right? So, but they want to be, I'm sure, very engaged with the communities where they exist and want to have full input from the towns that, um, you know, more so Columbia probably than than Hebron, I don't think there's currently an access point from Hebron on the within the boundary of the state-owned land. Likewise, with uh, there is um, Lebanon, of course, with the um, the airline state park trail. So there would probably be consideration of an access point from that trail, um, which would make a ton of sense, I think. And you know, but that will come out in the planning process and the public, you know, input process. So yes. So uh, there's no I... there, there's no scenario where Imba goes in, puts together a plan, and presents it to the town and the state for approval. That's not how this works. This is a very public facing participatory process with full transparency, and they're going to use all of that input to formulate this this master plan to be considered. And even then, you know, it's. There's no guarantee that it get, that the state says yes, this is adopted, but if they, you know, we have talked about this with, you know, both you guys and the state and IMBA that if the process is very, you know, um, if there is engagement throughout the entire thing, the scenario where a plan is presented and it's not adopted is far less likely. So this, they, they understand how this works. They do this all across the country and um, that's, you know, there's certainly adequate time for public engagement. So next, uh, so right now there's also a, a management plan being developed for the airline trail, the 12 town. Is Imba gonna have a seat at that so that there'll be coordination between the two master plans? Yeah, of course they will consider all you know, documents that relate to, you know, its connectivity and things like that. So, so as it relates to that and, you know, the, the economic, I think that was sort of fate more economic development, rural development focused, but I haven't read it. So I don't know. Um, but yes, that would be something that they would consider and look at. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, I know your time is um, is valuable. So, um, do you have anything you'd like to bring to us? Do you need an executive session or anything? No, just to say that um, the you know that I'll keep you all posted. But um, they just made the announcement last month. I've been. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, one second. <laughs> That's your assistant. <laughs> um, sorry, you can see me getting run. Uh, yeah. So, so we will coordinate with them on the contracting, um, and make sure that all of the uh, documents are you know, well in order, but that hasn't, I haven't received the, you know, initial contract or anything from the state to move forward and, you know, obligate the money and all of that will probably take a month or two here, but we'd, we'd love to get in bug or, you know, whomever contracted as soon as possible. So we'll start on our end on that, doing some of that behind the scenes, you know, logistical stuff and, um, and I'll keep you all posted. Good. So I have one more question for you. So Friends yeah. of Mono Pond, yep. So Friends of Mono Pond, is there anybody that you could put us in touch with with the DEP, which will allow us explain to us what activities we can do tomorrow morning, next week? Uh, 
before all this master, between now and when the master plan is accepted? Yeah, so so that would be a coordination with the state. And so Tom Tyler is the director of state parks and there, I believe Dave Buckley is the supervisor. And so coordination with those folks, um, what was the type of activity you were thinking? Is it like invasive management or is it more like trail development? All of the above, <laughs> David Buckley, was responding to me six months ago and hasn't responded at all. So I just didn't know whether who to go to, whether you could <coughs> reach out and have somebody contact us so we can have a sit down and say, these are the activities that they would want us to do, allow us to do over the next year or two until the master plan is implemented. Yeah, I think that's that's a role for Tom and Dave. And um, we've we have done some of that. So if any of you are familiar with the preserve in Old Saybrook, um, there's an interim trail system that was sort of a user created impromptu trails. They've continued to be used heavily. And as we're planning, um, doing sort of this larger scope of planning around that state park um, or state forest, there have been, you know, the, the town has been allowed to you know, create access points to close trails where, you know, there's impacts to wetlands or, you know, T and E species and things like that. So, so yeah, that would be a coordination with um, Dave or someone um, in Dave's role or, you know, kind of lateral position. Um, and if not Dave, then maybe it's Tom, but I would think that that's something that could be managed reasonably you know if there needs to be trail work done letting the state know and saying you know we're we're here to offer our volunteer services i'm sure they'd be very happy about that um you know in the interim while we're putting together a more comprehensive plan okay good thank you yeah so so it, it... If I understood right, within a month or two, the, um, the the trade association will start work. What do you think of on this? Or? It's it's hard to say how long it'll take with the state to contract um, because they cannot reimburse TPL costs that have been incurred prior to our contract being executed, and so we can't um officially like engage imba to do the work until that contract is in place so we would love to be able to get on you know get the contract executed soon so they have the summer season to you know do some of that field work because they they the folks from imba will be on the ground um they'll spend some time on the ground they'll also do you know aerial and lidar and all that like you know, remote imaging to kind of get a sense of things using data, uh, looking at other plans, everything that we talked about. So I I would guess that we'd be lucky if we contracted with EMBA um, by late summer, once we've got the stuff with the state executed, and then they could, you know, have that last month of August, September to, to start doing some field work. Sure. Okay. But then, you know, theoretically, we're looking at about a year. Um, so it's it's really the the development of the plan and the public engagement and participation and, you know, sort of digesting all of that over, you know, several month period coordinating with the state agencies and divisions, wildlife, forestry, all the all the folks that want to have a say in how this thing looks at the end of the day is going to be the most time consuming part of it um, because those those divisions within DEP will will have to review it. We'll have to bring their teams together to review it. And as you can imagine, that takes a lot of time. So um, the whole process start to finish is probably at least a year. And and we did include in the application the full like, you know, permitting. So once they have a a plan, this thing goes all the way to, you know, construction and and the it sort of stops at okay, we've gotten the permits, this is the plan, this is how it's gonna look. 
and you know theoretically by by next year or a year and a half from now we can apply for the actual implementation of the plan meaning you know hiring the contractors and the engineers to put in the natural surfacing or you know put in the trails and you know there would be also opportunities for volunteer engagement there too but but this is a this is not a short process this is going to take some time Gotcha. Okay. Um, all right. That that's very helpful. Uh, uh, it it gives us some sort of a time frame, and we can get some full work done on a local level prior to that. Great. Okay. Um, do you have anything else, Lars? I don't. <laughs> it's all good news, though. <laughs> can, can, I, know, can we go into executive session just for a minute? Let me ask her another question. Well, it's kind of tough. Uh, I, I don't know who Marianne is. Yeah. I don't. Oh. Either. I, that's fine. I'm. I'm here. Oh, yeah. oh we'd have to boot Marianne out. I don't uh, know who Marianne is. All right. Well, I guess if she's got nothing. Does anybody to... know who Mary Ann is? We ask her. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Ann? I'm sure it's an event. Put her in a waiting room. Yeah. Put her in a waiting room. Okay. You sure it's an event? Mary Ann, I'm going to put you in a waiting room because Ann uh, wants to go into executive oh. session with honor for a minute. I think you probably know. Oh, about time. And. Oh. Well, that's all right. It's too complicated. Okay. So we can wait until next month. Mm -hmm. okay. Am I going to objective session or not? Is it too complicated? Or? No, I just put her in a waiting room. Okay. All right. It's about time. Um, you, who's time? The, I got it. This time. You're all right. You're oh, all right. You can invite him in if I you think, like. Or ask I him think we'll invite him to stay because okay. he needs to know everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll okay. Okay. I move we go into executive session at eight. What is it today? Seventeen. Eight. Nine. Nine. No, nine. 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 Seventeen. Okay. Go. Okay. All right. All right. Honor. My question is, what is there anything up to up to date on the? Uh, Wait a minute. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got I have it. no updates, Paul. No updates. Hold on. Oh, okay. All right, that's it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was quick. There right. no, there Sorry. Was, come out of executive session. All right. It was We're so hot for a while, it seemed. <laughs> okay, Paul. Yeah. No, it's that's all right. She says she has no updates. I put Paul by mistake. Jesus. <laughs> no. Oh. All right. We're out of executive <laughs> session. All right, Marianne's at, back. At, oh, and Paul's back. What is it? Mm -hmm. Not 19 and no votes. All right, right. I want an update next month. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Get on the phone, honor. <laughs> I, I would love to have some acquisition news before we make the plan so we can include everything. Yeah. Yeah, that we would be including across the airline trail. Okay. Okay. That's right. Yes. Okay. Good. Honor, you're welcome to stay or if you I'm, I'm gonna get to work. I've I was out of the country for a month, so I've like got a lot of catching up to do. Um so yeah. yes, I appreciate the time these and days. Those, and those babies are Growing fast, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Okay, Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yep. Okay. Let's um, move on to old business. Anything on the Route 66 acquisition? No. no. Um, I need to talk to Rob about that. Okay. Topic. And any news on Anita Fangry? Nothing moved on that. No, um, I need to talk 
Well, I've got that too. Oh, There's Denise and Denise surveying help. Good that you're face to face. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dean. I need to talk to Rob about that. <laughs> uh, you promised there was, you said that by this meeting you have a report. And I have, that's what you said. I've seen Rob. On your way. He's, been, <laughs> he's back now. He said, <laughs> the whole key to all these things uh, is a uh, master surveyor with a. Uh, Yep. Knowledge. Well, can you comment on Pine Street? Uh, we we have to negotiate a uh, something. Something. Okay. Yeah, we've been at that point for a long time. Yeah. Okay. But so there's there's been no meeting uh, with the neighbors. Not with the horse but the horse one. No. That's the next step. Okay. Okay. Um how perimeter her Trail of clients. I haven't heard anything. Has we have a, are you the official rep for that? Hop River. Beth. I know Beth, 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 Beth Long. This guy attends everything, but I mean, you. <laughs> Do we have anybody for this? Beth, Beth Long for the Hop River Trail. Over the town. But our committee doesn't have anybody monitoring that except you. Right. Yeah. So I had, I had asked to get the minutes and things, which I did a couple of months ago, but I haven't before. I haven't in recent. Do they meet regularly? I don't know right now. I haven't. I had other things going on. I know. I know. I, 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 no, here's, here's what I hear from my friend, John Hankins, who is best friends with Andover's town planner. Um, they have received a grant for signage for the, you know, from Vernon to Atlantic. And um, they originally had a meeting and it could be all kinds of people. And that's when Tom and I and Mark and Beth Lund all went and got everybody excited. And after that, They've sort of narrowed the meetings down to the executive people. So if anything's happening there, and I'm sure it is, um, we're not getting the communication. Who is that grant from? The same, the same trails grant that right. like the model pond. It's and, from deep. The airline trail state. Yeah, there's three three of the trails grants. One was for Pop River, one was for the airline, one was for Model Pond three. All at the same time, May 15th, they were released. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the communication there is not good. Uh, unless that is getting communication, I'll, um, we're not. Here. I'll follow up with that to find out. Okay. If, if she anything. should be getting communication. Um, and so, more of a. Uh, and we heard about the 12 town airline trip alliance from Tom. Do you have more? Uh, in the past week, they sent out their draft master plan. Email that out. And the lady that was heading up the whole thing, that she's retiring at the end of the month. Yeah. Did you so, volunteer? So, you know, she <laughs> works for. Um, I know that. And, and she put Jimmy out the. She, yeah. And she put out the call for a new, a new um, sure. leader. <laughs> and I, did so we nominated Tom. Um, <laughs> well, actually, I take that one. It's a paid position, I think. <laughs> Did you ever buy him? Not yet. No. Does Columbia fit into this anywhere at all? Like, are they going to try and yes. get riders to the winery or something? Or? Yes. yes, yes, all yes. of that. Part of the economic development. So you have the 12 towns, and each town is, I think it was three. You know, three, what are the three highlights? <clears throat> yeah, three highlights that you want. And so it could be the winery, rec park. I don't so know. Tom, Ann, and I worked on making sure we had input into that. Right. Mm -hmm. 
That's so part of, that's part of that. The winery, rec park, and the main groups, right. I think, were the three that we put. And Lebanon, I think, I don't know if they have a rep. Um, they sort of, I mean, I guess it's Phil Chester, their town planner. But um, well, we, we mentioned the Lebanon Green, we're a perfect destination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, sure. So, so a part of it too is this, so they're going at it is what's why are we doing this because it's an economic development thing for the town and so they would be working with the DOT to improve bicycle lanes to get you to and from the airline trail to these destinations and to, to, get, to get to the moose you'd have to come all the way around Mackey's and the bridge yeah you'd have yeah. to go airline to hop river and then on the six but there's a missing Bridge, right? Don't worry about that. Eventually, you're going to make it bridge. Don't worry about it. Designed in 2008. You don't have to go across the bridge here. And then you go on 66. So that would, so that would, that really would be come down the airline to the, to the Hop River Trail, go up the Hop River Trail, and then there'll be a bridge to get you to the vehicles. Yeah. It's already been approved. Or you just stay on 60, no, stay on 66 or 66. But the the yeah, it's not great. But it's not perfect. It's it's not bad. The walking bridge right now will be done in 2026, 27. Oh my God, until seven. Do I have that one? Shippo is Shippo is looking for Indian artifacts right now. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's, yes, it's always the always I, I I get it, it's wonderful, but on a railroad, on a railroad track, I doubt there's any non yeah, they built the railroad, railroad that was gone. But at, that's okay. as they were developing all this stuff, they, they kept adding stakeholders, and I think it was like 150 different stakeholders from different towns, different you know, who was interested in stuff. So I I had asked to be the primary contact. For the airline trail group because of the importance of how that plan gels with the model plan plan because i don't i don't want to see two plans made in a vacuum well we're planning to use the airline's parking lot well you can't use our parking you know, <laughs> yeah it's it's important and i think that this the recreation director was the official liaison and I don't think she is as invested in it as Tom is. Well, well, she, yeah. she has to start actually going to a few of these things. Oh, we'll see what she wants. So. Absolutely. So we, she's still on the lips. She okay. gets communication. It's just that. Tom, Tom as you've noticed, is a bit more. Once it latches on, it gets done. <laughs> it, might be, it might not be done right, but it'll get done. It'll get done. <laughs> okay. Um, Hot River Preserve. We, um, uh, the beat goes on, clearing the land. Um, there's there's a movement of wood to add one more acre. I don't know where that stands. Um, I I'd have to address it with the board of selectmen. I'd have to contact the owner. The, yeah. What acre is that? Yeah, where is that coming from? That is next to the bridge. The bridge yeah. to the and it belongs park. to John Nomad. Oh, who uh, lives in the house, the house the the mill street. house in the um mill owner's house which is right there that you go right, across yeah, the bridge, bridge. Yeah. where do you think stand with the new bridge <laughs> it went out to bid for the second time because the state denied our first low bidder the same low bidder one again so it delayed the whole project another year Hmm. Uh, it's because we didn't have a high enough percentage of disadvantaged subcontractors uh, 
because we don't have enough out here in Collin County. But anyway, they were under the 15% requirement. Now they have 15%. So we're, we're back on track. Probably another Paul. Please. Maybe you'll be around for that. <laughs> <laughs> I just I yeah. it keeps living, make it keeps living. It's, it's, Building bridges in Connecticut is nearly impossible. But I, I don't oh. think we need a new bridge there. That's the least important. I just <laughs> it butts the school land there. Right. That yeah. they're asking about. So, it, so well, the, um, we ought to know where it's going to go. The next thing that happened there Second. is July 1st, the budget goes in, and there is in the budget for guardrails to create a small parking lot yeah, right there. So DPW will um, clear about four trees that are in the way, and we'll contract with we'll subcontractor to do direct park rails, and we'll make a little parking lot. That's great. So that's coming. Yep. That's great. And Tuesday night is the next meeting for that hot river preserve. Oh, geez. So that reminds me. Joan <laughs> wants me to go out to bid on the radar, underground radar for the area. Oh, yeah. I haven't done that. And I guess Joan's convinced that my parking lot is now going to be smaller because she's found things to indicate <laughs> the mill was closer to the road than we thought. Yeah. You, you just Hold up. what Joan says. You just I will say, just, okay. You know, she says, Joan, that you say, oh, well, I mean, but if you don't have parking, <laughs> right no, there's nobody to enjoy it. That's right. you, you might just get off the road instead of way off the road. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, one of, the, one of the things with that area, too, is, is the Hop River trails right across the bridge. And part of the Hop River tra trail lines there work. Maybe improve that parking area because that's really where you'd see people coming on bikes and walking <clears> from there <throat> over to the Hop River Preserve. So there's overflow parking right. mm -hmm. in Cobber Creek. <laughs> Correct. And I think we're also building a, um, I think it's on the Coventry side, but in the plans, we made sure we got a fire hook up for water okay. tied in with this whole bridge project. Kind of a side question to that. So, if there's some sort of controversy over parking, like it needs to be close to the road versus further in, who's the final decision maker on that? Well, the town owns the property, so it would be a negotiated agreement. And I think this pound, this penetrating. Survey ground, ground penetrating penetrate. survey would be very helpful to see where the old mill was exactly. I think that's what's missing. Does, it, does that go to the board? Do they get in? They're the if if it if it's something we can easily agree to. Yeah. We'll what's the what's the ultimate plan for the old? Are they, are they planning to dig it up, or we just want to know where it is? I think according to Joan, we want to know where it is, and they want to try to make a. Uh, ultimate mapping to show exactly where the mill was and there might be minor excavation to show some of the foundations but I think it, typically the how you preserve old foundations you bury them and, and say it was here it was right down right down there if I mean, something comes up we could dig it up so if you have a parking lot on top of it what's it going and on? that's what I'm thinking I don't think you're actually digging up the foundation in that parking lot anymore. yeah so you're just fine I haven't directly talked to Joan. It's just this batch, you know, information coming to me through Bat One. Who, yeah. when they built the road, uh, I don't know if you saw the road, oh, where's the department, that, but they also put a culvert to get a road over that sluice way. Yeah. So that's done. So we can easily get mowers and stuff down to the open space field if we had the brush hog it or the other owner that owns past us can now they'll have a combination to the gate and he could get to his property. So there is a gate in place now. We moved it to right over the road. Because my only obligation is not to damage the old foundation. Right. You can drive over, but not with equipment that would harm it. So, um, yes. Uh, in Direct answer to your question. That I, there are no plans to dig the whole place up. 
No. There will be excavations in a couple of places to answer some questions <clears throat> about what was there. But then it'll just um, think root cellar. You know, the cellar was already open, so it's still open. But the rest of it, they did excavation. Then they put it in back. Well, years ago, I did a project in Tillyburg, and the open thing was an open foundation similar to what's on Wellswood. And we, we, we were required to bury it. So we buried the foundation. We put it on a map so we know where it was. Yeah. And now it's put certain sand and stuff. There's some specification which you fill it with. But now it's, it's there. And for some reason, someone wanted to investigate it in the future, which of course probably never happened. And that's okay. typically in those under the direction of a uh, archaeologist. Well, we also yeah. found the Moore's Indian School, which used to be where our flag, when we were putting in those bricks, we found some of the cornerstones in the old Indian School when it was there. So that was pretty cool. I just so, yeah. I mean, so if we have the parking lot, it's not going to serve anything. Unless we're going to excavate it all and make it yeah. use a foundation. I don't want to do that. It, it's like I, I suspected in the wells which section of one time that all the wells will eventually be filled with sand. Yes, that has to happen. Yeah, there's bed frame over it. Get, yeah. get out there and fill it. Okay. Um, and uh, anyway, at the meeting of the Hot River Preserve on Tuesday, um, Deb Fisk, the um, recreation director, is going to attend, and she's going. We're going to discuss with her the um, the use for the open space and. So and who's going to attend? The yeah, yes. Is that the 20th? Yeah, that's the um, next Tuesday. Is the yes, 20th. yes. So we have four select meeting yeah. um, at yeah. seven. Yeah, yeah. you're meeting before that yeah. at yeah. four yeah. o'clock. Four yeah. o'clock yeah. yeah. here. No, nope. on site. Then we'll, then we'll come. Okay, so that's the Hopper Reserve you. Yes, and um. It, and so we wanted to meet on site because it's good when you're making plans for a site to actually look at it. And we'll discuss um, uh, possible recreation usages and, and things like that. And also, uh, and this is in preparation because I'm still trying to write the management plan for that property. The hopper. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so that will be the missing piece. Okay. Also, there's a new member. Yeah, yeah. There's a new member. Do you get a t shirt and a hat? Yeah. Get all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and River Watershed Partnership. I, I, I want to commend Rob, oh, yeah, principal. Did you send this to everyone, right? Did you all have a chance to read that. this? Yeah, that was a wonderful article. That was, very, was. Very, 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 very well, that was that my article? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was certainly not the important part. <clears throat> it was the colored pictures that I wanted you to see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that is sweet. That yeah. is an excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have time to run it by you, which um, I always do. That's fine. If it has to do with. Uh, and, and so uh, that's why I bring this up. Kudos. Great article. Yeah, just wonderful. We, uh, we had our second, there's been no meeting since right. left my last report. Uh, we did have our second leg of the trek, the tour, this past uh, Sunday. Uh, very nice exposure to uh, 
the Hebrew uh, Marlboro, Girl, I'm sorry, Marlboro Girl and uh, Colchester. Were you, were you in the Raymond work? Yes. Yeah. I, I obviously, if you were interested, I, I could talk a little bit about that. But what was amazing is we, we visited Graydale Falls Town Park in yep. Denver, which is a beautiful spot. <laughs> if you haven't been there, it's worth visiting. But they have exactly the same, I guess, right across the uh, Jeremy River, they, they, the Salmon River State Forest. And they have exactly the same issues um, that we have in Bottle Pond State Park. It was like, of course, it's been going on for a lot longer. The competition between bikers, hikers, ATVs, it, it's all the same. Yep. And it's, it's been survived, I mean, more or less uh, in that area. We went then to, uh, Place that the confluence, the formation of the sand, which is the uh, Jeremy, let's say no, Black Ledge, and Black Ledge What's that? What's the other thing? It's sand. Yeah, <laughs> I, I read my own other book. Uh, but, but that you have to hike a little bit to that, but it was really, really a nice spot. Yeah. Um, so that I got to see it. Then we, we ended on River Road in, in uh, Alberta. So it was, it was very nice. I, I couldn't believe the similarity between, I mean, I guess I didn't think it through, but the Salmon River State Forest has encountered everything that we're encountering. It's not at the same ATV years. I'll bet. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. um, it says here, Mint Brook joins Raymond Brook in Hebron, which flows into the Jeremy River in Grayville Falls Town Park. Yes. Yep. Now keep going. And then the Jeremy finds the Flat Ledge in North Westchester, which is Colchester, that's Colchester. Form the San River. And that's where we, we want. Yep. Okay. That's, that's accessible from a uh, dirt road. Well, river road becomes a dirt road in, in Colchester. Very, very popular spot in the summer. I never down to this gorgeous. That's the, that starts the Salmon River. The next one will be uh, in the late summer. Is there so, a launch down there? No, Salmon oh. River is the Not launch yet. into Connecticut River. It's the mouth of the Salmon River. Yeah, okay. that's, that's, that'll be our next one. That's supposedly on kayaks. Yes, so I've done. I, I did that yeah. many years. Oh, yeah, it'll be at the, well, she's got a plan on this, depending on the water. Yeah. Well, years ago, I canoed up at, at certain points, it's about this much water. Yeah, yeah when, I know. <laughs> when you get up to Macamoo State Park, it's yeah, yeah. I think she'll start down at the seven mile. Yeah. 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 Right. You have to wait yeah. for a little yeah. rain yeah. to yeah. get the water <clears throat> level up. Yeah, so sure. that's great. So it's it's really gratifying to have an active participant. I'm learning a lot and I'm enjoying it. That's yeah. <laughs> cool. So just to add, add to that is Colchester Land Trust actually has an easement on the River Road area protecting 62 acres that are bought that river. But that's a part of what they did. And when I was talking to them, they were Totally unaware that the Mint Brook and Salmon River started in, in Columbia, so they were fascinated with that. But, um, and, uh, it's exciting. I mean, that was such a minor player. I have to give the town credit for participating. You know, we're, we're a very minor player. We're, not, we're a major player. We're the beginning. Every time I go source, they wrote a source. Mint Brook down by the Raymond Brook. Yeah. It, it often has no water in it to speak of, you know. I know. And it's just Whereas a wee little bit. Our mid brook preserve has water most of the year and it's, it's beautifully yep. scenic and it, it has a lot. So I, I tried to play that up, you know, the, the, the town part of my lawn, the town part. Yep. Exciting. And, and if you look at this map, this is the kind of mapping that Joshua's Trust does 
and Land Stream Valley. And this is very, um, it, I mean, to look at it, you say, oh God, I don't know what that is. But if you study it, um, it tells you everything uh, about the land usage in that area. And that is crucial to a plan. And um, I followed the last week that way um, closely. And, he's, and Ron follows the um, Sand River. And of course, they, they all meet up. And, you know, and, and they all fit together. Yeah. And thank God, Columbia, we got in this because we missed the boat on getting in the last green family. So I'm a private member of that. But the town cannot be a member. Why? We miss the boat. Well, it's a takes federal. A, takes a, literally takes an act of Congress to put us into that. Yeah. It was an act of Congress. And At the time, we didn't want to be in. And, and, yeah, and, Bill, I understand. And at the outset, it, what do you want to do in that? But why, why is it so hard? Because it literally, the Congress would have to. <laughs> but they'd have to bring it up for Congress and change to the original charge. You need to give them something to do. <laughs> why not uh, Why not bring it up? I mean, I don't care. Sounds like it's just a, a, writing a, a bill. All right, Ron, we're going to challenge you. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't put it on me. Should, should I have Courtney's number? <laughs> it's, it's, it's be both. I mean, you sound like you're, you're well versed, both of you, all of you. And, has it been tried? Has any, anybody been tried? I think it's been talked about, but I don't think it, anybody has ever said Courtney or. Uh, you know, no. with all where you present this, you know, I don't think anybody's done that. Uh, I'll put Tom on. He gets <laughs> stuff. <stuck. laughs> well, I'm, right I'm just, I'm that. just whine about that every time I, know, I get I a know. chance. <laughs> but maybe someday we'll get in at the Congress and that would connect the two. Yeah. And maybe that's the point. But the Last Green Valley and the Stamp River Partnership um, do very similar things. Yeah. In they do the mapping, which creates an overall plan for which is the most strategic <coughs> plan to develop, which is the most strategic plan to uh, conserve as open space. What is the best land for agriculture? And then this creates a plan and you go after it. And Joshua's Trust has a plan just like this. And if you follow their newsletters, uh, they have just conserved a whole uh, north south corridor. Uh, in Mansfield, Chaplin, and Asher, which is going to be so important in climate change. So it's it's a strategic way to do open space rather than just being like a sea sponge and grabbing what goes by. It's a, a, a conservation plan. And, and, it, and like our EMBA plan will take everybody mm -hmm. and everything concerned into consideration. These sorts of plans, regional plans, take into consideration all the players, the underserved population, housing, um, agriculture, um, development, as well as Water quality. And, and, did I preach? Sorry. Okay. I think we beat friends upon a pond to death. 
Um, and now, Paula, new business, fundraising. Give us our assignment. Mm -hmm. uh, I just have one more old business. Um, I had talked to um, uh, Mark this morning about um, we had had a discussion and a vote on a recommendation on um, a um, that the Camp Astawama, a right of first refusal. And I just wondered where that stood. Mark says that somebody higher up at the church. Did, did you ever present it to the selectmen, the idea after we had our. Yeah, they, um, that was back when you were on. They weren't. It, it was agreed on that I could pursue it. Yeah. Um, I think that was great. And right now, I went back to our contact at the local level. She said she presented to the trustees and never went anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it has to yes. be, at, yeah, it has to be at the, at the church level. And we tried that with a letter a few years back. And we got to let it back. We're not interested, but we certainly could try again. Yeah, could we ask it? If, here, here's the thing: I swim every morning, back and forth where the mornings are, and so in one direction I'm looking at Aswan every morning, and it's just what was the property we lost on Hunt Road? I, I keep wanting to say land, but that's not right. Uh, Lessinger. 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 Um, I, I just keep thinking of that lessons your property and you know that suddenly something could happen at the church and it could just you know without change the thing about a right of first refusal at least they have to contact you they they have to say some, you know something is happening here something's in the works and um, I just I would just hate to see it get lost without us even knowing anything about it it's somewhere down the road that's it. So maybe. Well, the camp is a much, the camp is owned by Center Congregational Church. Right. And that's about half or a third the size of the total camp property, camp property. And the rest of it is owned by an entity called Trustees of Warburton Chapel. And it's, it's a group in Hartford that have a very old group. Um, they were set up probably 150 years ago to take care of the poor. They were related to um, the Central Congregational Church, and so they purchased the property. And I think the story goes in nineteen nine or ten. Um, the camp wanted to purchase that whole property, but they didn't have the money, so they went to the trustees. And um, the trustees bought a large park um, that sort of goes around the camp property. And then the, the person in the church, uh, an ancestor of the Wells family, um, bought some of it too. So they pared it down where the church could own the camp and they could utilize the, the water but, chapel. But I, and then I, I the wealth just... family owns that. And so that's why you have to deal with both entities. Well, there, did you make a note of that, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> I have all that in the file. Okay, all right. I guess so it's, it's just to keep it. It's never simple. It's yeah, like, yeah, well, sure it's, it's, sure it's, it's not. not in owner. So we can talk about the fundraiser? Yes, please. Okay. The question was the fundraiser. Yes. Yeah, that's that's new business. Um, I think it's follow the money. Um, 
I think we're at a ticket price of between 50 and $60. What would be the vote here? What would you pay? 50 or $60? Would you go for 60? I would think it's too much. Or I would go for 60. But is Joe down the street going to go for 60? That's the question. Is Joe down the street going to go at all? <laughs> right. I mean, it's a fundraiser. Yeah. You know, yeah. When, yeah. when all these politicians go and have a fundraiser, they're not going there. They're not worrying about their, they want to raise money. So, right. And so the people who are committed to that cause will probably spend a little more money. I think 60 would be. Would be fine. Yeah, but if you got to look at your audience, you can't make it affordable. So more people come, you have to make the money on the people you got going. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> and on that subject, I did talk to Steve Harrington at the main Moose. Mm -hmm. He's willing to, if we have some sort of poster, he'd be happy to put it up there, promote our thing. And he did mention he'd be willing to do some kind of contribution. I wanted to get more information so I could talk to him about it. Okay. But he's willing to do something. Mm -hmm. What's the date again, Paul? I'm sorry. What's the date of the fundraiser? 17th, August 17th, Thursday, August 17th. I'm moving on. <laughs> it, is, it is. So uh, I'll do something about the tickets. And I guess what we decided was there'll be physical tickets that we all could distribute, you know, try and sell, and then also online. And then Ann and I were going to have a little discussion. Um, Steve agreed to contact. It's um, he, Steve Everett. Steve Everett. He requested a um, a list of of people that um, we felt um, we would like to ask for a, some type of a contribution, either towards the auction itself or. Um, a financial contribution. And he was, I met with him uh, a week and a half or two ago, and he was raring to go. And he asked me this morning, do we have the list? But we have, we have to come up with this list. Who, who in Columbia is left with money? <laughs> well, it's either in this. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's, that's about it. Well, um, that, um, no, that's not it because TikTok here. Um, what jobs do you have for us to do the day of the event? What needs to happen? Because you've got to have all your ducks in a row yeah, yeah. in the next well, three I'm, weeks. I'm waiting for a little feedback. And the, you've got the Trust for Public Land, this lady that is in charge of uh, development and fundraising. Right. It turns out has all of the Northeast, New England and New York. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so she spread pretty thin. But the starting point is what they will be able to contribute. And then, I mean, what kind of manpower will they have there and how the money will be handled? Like I told her, the money has to go to them. Yep. Yeah. Um, like even the ticket sales. Has to be. Uh, have you talked to her since you have not mm -hmm. zoomed with her? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have? Yeah. Yeah. So things like posters and stuff like that. Maybe that soon. Very soon. Sure. Uh, you know, Maine Moose would be a good one because a lot of people go there. Right. But the only place in town that a lot of people go to. Yeah. At this time of year, anyways. Um, was uh, do you think TPL will be the website or whatever to do the online ticket sales, or are you going to have to have your own like you talked about last time? Yeah, no, I think there there is this company that for uh, basically what a credit card commission is uh, will do the ticketing for you. Can we have TPL put up a page that we can push on Facebook so people would know it's through TPL to go to your online registration rather than us trying to develop some sort of a page. Yeah. Yeah. Sir. And I uh, talked to the director 
and she can do Facebook kind of things and mm -hmm. advertising. She's she's good at that. <laughs> um, I received a call from uh, Mark Lang, who is the chair of Lebanon's Conservation Commission. And he said, what is this I hear about a fundraiser at Hearthstone? He's asking me for details because he heard the rumor. And um, he's very enthusiastic. He wants to advertise it. He's going to grab um, as many people as he can and attend. And so posters, information. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to give deeper and heavily. Yeah. And uh, so details, posters, flyers, um, okay. I'm, whatever. I'm going to get that elevator speech from uh, Honor that I think I think was asked for last time. Um, which I haven't gotten yet, but okay, good. And um, it's I think it's really important that it gets on on her schedule so that she will come with the other. Oh yeah, oh, I, oh she, oh she, no, she said she's got that. I know she's done that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's that part is taken care of. Anything else? You guys okay, and then the day of, I'll be there. You tell me what you want me to do. Okay. Okay. I think it was kind of to the front of the model pod once you have the tasks, same people but with a different hat. <laughs> the the top you want me to wear. <laughs> I know Anne and I have talked about if since she's already talked to Lebanon, but we were talking about having friends of Mar Khan go to the Lebanon Conservation Commission, talk about friends of Mar Khan jointly with the fundraiser so that we could would you like to join friends of Mar Khan or would you like to you know participate with the fundraiser mm -hmm. so they could both bits of information at the same time. When are you going there? We don't know yet. I mean, we just, we we're just, waiting. We're waiting for, for, for we need our elevator uh, speech and we need our poster and we need our here, go to this we're website. Trying. You know, all, all that stuff has to be in place. We need the friends amount of pond trifle. We need posters and information. Okay. 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 And we're well, um yeah. I don't know. Where do you guys go? Poster. Do people read posters? I'm old. Oh, I can do that. That's a time. We need Facebook. Probably the right director is probably the best way to do it. Yeah. So I don't people know that it's legit. I don't do Facebook. I think the public is that they lose it because I don't know where else, but they lose it the person who knows the people in the advocate. So that would be one that would be very good. Yep. But I just hear the town, town hall, they have some there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then whether in some place in Hebron, some place in the Red Park, or not. the Red Park, or sure here. In the bathroom of the nerd. That's the best advertising. <laughs> Remember these to pin the newspapers up? Oh yeah, yeah. sports fans. Yeah. <laughs> and we digress. <laughs> Are we going to close this meeting? Oh God, yes. Are we done? At this time, at ten oh five. Yes. <laughs> okay, we're adjourned. I got to make a motion. Oh, I move we adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Oh. Uh, no.